3 a.m. right, they will start like exercising on God knows what, and then you will hear like thumping sounds on the floor. But as a property agent, do you need yeah. to like tell your clients that there's a murder there? So. Officially, we are not obliged to tell oh, unless they oh, ask. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. What's up guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chatterbox. My name is Leon. I will be your host for today. And next to me are three absurdly overqualified individuals to teach me, an absolutely clueless individual, about a very interesting topic, which is housing in Singapore. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a year 3 university student. I actually applied to BTO four times and she got it quite luckily on the fourth try. So that's a good thing. My name is Thomas. I'm 35 years old. I'm in real estate and I have, I have more hobbies than you can imagine. Like I'm into a lot of things. I play guitar, piano, drums. I'm into motorbike. I body build and I play badminton and I'm into magic. The body build part we can see la. <laughs> we can see la. Hi everyone, I'm Angeline. I'm a professional auntie and I run Android Explains on Telegram as well as TikTok. It's so fun fact about myself, I really love using Excel to um, build dashboards and um, to calculate my finances. Cause who doesn't love knowing more about their own finances? I, I love seeing the numbers but not putting them in an Excel. No, sometimes you just need a slap on your face once in a while, you know. Hi everybody, my name is Leon. I'm an actor, host, content creator. Fun fact, I play as a goalkeeper. One and only on the pitch. Oh. Fun fact. We're going to play a game called Yay or Nay, okay? So the smiley face is a yay, and the frowny face is a nay. Okay, so basically yes or no. And the descriptions, the questions that I'll be giving you, is a description of a housing unit, and then you'll let me know whether you will want to live there or not. Okay. Yes, okay? First situation. You find the perfect BTO to live in with your partner, but it's in Yishun. Oh, no way, man. <laughs> Three, no way. Two, the Yishun guys will come and find you. No one. way, man. <laughs> Result. Yishun. Nay, no. nay, yay. The all one out. Please explain. I'm why. the only yay? Yes. Yeah, of course. Oh, Who wants to I would say no, so I mean, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased, but I'm living in Bishan on the red line. So it's like. I'm more familiar with the north-south line. So going to issue and the amenities there, like the north point, I think it's not so bad. So, I mean, okay, I'm a property agent. Okay. So I always look at things from a financial standpoint. I mean, after you understand financially, then it might change your mind. Maybe. I do agree that north point is amazing. I do agree that north point is amazing. <laughs> it's, very, it's very huge though. Let's go, second scenario. You find the perfect resale HDB flat to live in, but... You found out that a gruesome murder was committed in it. No. No, no, no. no I would say no also. La. Yeah. I mean, you have 50% off the price, la, but you also have a 50% increase of a haunting. La. Yeah. That's yeah. how I feel. It's la. not worth it. It's, yeah. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, but as a property agent, do you need yeah. to like tell your clients that there's a murder there? So, officially, we are not obliged to tell <gasps> unless they ask. Oh, are you serious? Yes, unless they ask. So, if you don't ask, we are not obliged to tell, but if you ask, we have to say the truth. Third scenario, you just moved into your new home. Wow. And you found out that your neighbour sings karaoke until 3 a.m. every night. Yeah. But does they sound good? Sound like Taylor Swift? I think hit or miss some songs they are good. Uh. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sometimes they are Taylor Swift, sometimes they are Taylor Slow. You know? <laughs> okay. So we try. We, we we work it out with them, okay? So in three, two, one, go. Nay. Nee. Nay, nay, nay. Have you all had any experiences of like not a fantastic neighbour? Yes. So my the upstairs neighbour actually rented out their place and the tenants change us like every two years ish. So there was one time they rented to like a family. At 3 a.m. right, they will start like exercising on God knows what. And then you will hear like thumping sounds on the floor. Like <laughs> 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 I lost it in your face. <laughs> Did you say thumping or humping? No. <laughs> thumping, <laughs> thumping. And then after that, they they were, they realized that it actually was kids. Okay. At 3 a.m. kids jumping oh. around. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think they were like trying to look for food or something. Fourth scenario, fourth scenario. Oh, this one was another one, yeah. You found the perfect condo. But the gym is always smelly 
and the pull is always dirty. Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, okay. But it's a no. I, I thought, I'm surprised by Thomas, I thought you would say no because you yeah. gym often. Because I tell you right, nobody uses the condo gym, that's the first point. Okay. Nobody. I and use mine. You use? I use mine. Huh. Like, yeah. at least three times a week. For real? This is like really good No, 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 mine's a small ass gym, but I still use it. Huh. I chose Nay because I felt like if you're living at a condo, technically you're already paying for the amenities and yes, everything there. And why are they not being like why taken care of good? properly? Why doesn't yeah. it smell good? Clever. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> for me, I'm renting a space now. So I feel if I pay the rent, right? Like I have to abuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to make use of your soccer first. I'm the problem. I'm the problem. <laughs> Fifth scenario, yay your knee. There's a landed property on sale and the price is perfect. But it is right next to Old Changi Hospital. In three, two, one, go. Yay your knee. Nay, yay, yay. Come, come. The one that sighed the loudest, explain, explain. Why you why you knee? I think. I'm quite affected by my surroundings. So even if my perfect estate is perfect, like dream-wise perfect, if it's right next to Old Changi Hospital, I don't think I will be safe. And yeah. Okay, a Angeline, how are you? Oh, can I always pay someone to like, Whoa. you know? <laughs> like, like go and cleanse the house of it. Cleanse the hospital? No, cleanse the house. The house no problem. The house no problem. It's the hospital. No, then you put like talismans outside to like walk off the evil spirit. Then after you just think about all the good stuff that can happen in the house. Like, build a very nice kitchen, you know, the space that you don't get in a HDV. And then build like your dream walking closet. Let's move on to some really detailed individual questions, okay? So, the first question would be, what would your dream neighbourhood be? Like, you just love being there. Give us one MRT station, like your dream location. I'm biased because I stay in Bishan. It's already central. It's a prime location. So I'll probably, if I had a choice, I would still continue to stay at Bishan. Oh. Now time for the professional opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Dream location. That would be Tolo Blanc. Uh. You don't know Tolo Blanc? Blanc. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, the same question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your oh, face? Which MRT line is it? Tolo Blanc is the MRT. Oh. I tell you something about Tolo Blanc. You, you cannot yeah. believe it, okay? Tolo Blanc is walking distance to the Vivo City, the biggest shopping centre in Singapore, oh. correct? Yeah. Okay, uh, it's also walking distance to the cruise terminal. You want to go to Batam, 30 minutes, $40 across, you're, you're spending, uh, uh, what, rupiah. You become a millionaire, right? And right behind you is Mount Faber. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, now I The know, green corridor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, you want to cycle, you want to jog, you want to go there. Mm. And then, right, for medical, there is uh, Singapore General Hospital. It's right oh. there. Cantonment is there as well. Oh, and if you're high enough, you're looking out into the sea. Wow. And the southern side of it. Yes. Perfect view. Yes, I love Tolba. <laughs> now, Angeline, what would your dream uh, location in Singapore be? So, I would say like Tanjong Paga. Mm. Cause Tanjong Baga has like really good food, so I must make sure that the surrounding area has like food. I think it's very important for a lot of Singaporeans. What kind of food? Oh, oh that's Maxwell. Oh, Maxwell, Maxwell, Maxwell is not bad. Yeah. And then got Amoy. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. So you move there basically for food. And it's also like near to where I potentially want to work in the future. So now that we have understood your dream locations already, it's time to get into the real fine details. Let's head on to this report, okay? In a recent report published at the end of May 2023, Singapore was ranked as Asia Pacific's most expensive place to rent a private home with the median price being 1.6 million Singapore dollars in 2022. However, in terms of public housing, Singapore is the second most affordable city in the Asia Pacific. Why do you think there is such a big discrepancy between the cost of private and public housing in Singapore? Okay, very simple, right? Every landlord determines how much rental they want to collect based on one thing and one thing only, which is the mortgage. So, mortgage is determined by how much money you borrow. And it's determined further determined by how much money you actually purchase this property for. So in Singapore, we have this thing called the loan to value, 75%. So assuming you buy a $1 million property, you will borrow $750,000, right? So based on that, the interest would fluctuate accordingly based on your monthly repayment, right? So 
the total price tag, we call it the quantum. Assuming you buy a condo for 1 million, that 1 million, it's called the quantum, right? So generally, private properties, the quantum is a lot higher. Hence, the loan amount is higher, the mortgage is higher. Hence, in order for the landlord to make sense to rent it out, they need to collect a higher rental. Make sense? Yes. Now you fully understand, right? Yes. Now we talk about HDB. HDB is the most affordable housing in Singapore, right? In fact, we talk about BTO. There is absolutely nothing in Singapore you can get for cheaper and newer. BTO is the base, right? So BTOs are affordable. I cannot say cheap. Three to four to five hundred thousand you can get easily. Correct? Eh? Four to five hundred. Three, three to six hundred thousand you can get a BTO. Four la. Easily. Three to six hundred. All the, all the, you all the. You know now. I think I saw recently got one of the new project. I think it's going up to seven hundred. Okay. I don't yeah. know. I which think project, Kalang, but... Kalang Lampo, So right in front of the Kalang MRT, there's one. Yeah. 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 So okay, we talk about let's say Pongo for example. Three to six hundred. You close to like anyhow you can get for sure. Correct. So obviously three to six hundred thousand. Predominantly, a lot of people CPF can also pay. You're outstanding only hundred thousand, so your mortgage is low, hence your rent rent expectation is also low. So that's how we describe. What are some options for those who are unable or who cannot apply for public housing? For example, singles. This one I know. This one I know. Singles who are still under the age of thirty five. Correct. 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 Ah, oh, see, not bad. At least I know a bit. <laughs> or foreigners. Yeah. So what are the options available for these people then? Bite the bullet, live with your parents because the moment you move out, you pay rental. I assure you, you're not going to see any savings in your bank. And that is going to slow down your momentum towards buying a house. Because to buy a house, you need enough money to for down payment, stamp duty, all that kind of stuff, right? So just bite the bullet as much as you can. It, it's it's going to sound weird, but it hones your character and it's very important. But would you do? Would I? Would you? Yes, because I, I bite the bullet for very, very, very long. But how long will you bite <laughs> I tell you, uh, I bite the bullet for very, very long and then my first property was a landed property. Ooh. Yeah. You can flex uh, in both ways. Plus the <laughs> body build. What are uh, all of your thoughts? Okay, since you're all BTO, I, I, I'm still learning. I repeat for the fifth time, I'm still learning. What are your thoughts on the new HDB purchasing regulation? Crash course on the new video. Yeah, crash course. Thomas, let's go crash course. Okay, so so for HDB, right, there is this new thing called the PLH, the Prime Location Housing. So all these BTOs that are in prime areas will fall under this set of laws that governs the transaction that happens within the PLH. So PLH instead of a normal BTOs are five years MOP, PLH is 10 years, right? And upon selling your PLH 10 years down the road, you need to give 6% back to the government. So this is a clawback on your profit, alright? And you are perpetually not able to rent out your property. So you cannot rent out your PLH. So with, with all these things, right, people who buy there are people who really want to live there and they have no like strong ambitions to sell and upgrade to condo. Lah. Because it's going to be 10 years, man. Like imagine BTO, you need to wait 5 years for it to build. 10 more years, then it will affect the loan tenure down the road if you want to buy a condo. So all these things have to be looked upon in totality. You both of us got like PLH. Yours yeah. is Fair Park, right? Yeah, but you are very young. You all got a lot of time to burn. No, but we have 15 years to wait. From now, right? Yeah. Maybe like 14 years. Yeah. And I think my, my scenario is a bit worse. So uh, I applied for that uh, project. So in Kalang. Um, with MCPS, so the Married Child Priority Scheme. Mm. So there is my parents, right? Even if they want to downsize to a smaller flat. They can't. Yeah, they can't. And then to downsize is also quite expensive because the area that I live in is like the central area. So then now I'm kind of jailing them to... because I wanted to use their yeah. property yeah, to go yeah. and get extra ballot. Yeah. Yeah. So your parents cannot downgrade? They downgrade. need to stay within, yeah, the, within the 4 k radius. I yeah. uh, understand. Yeah. Yeah. You use the acronym of MCPS. Yeah. Can you please explain what that means? Yeah. This is the Marriage Child Priority Scheme. So basically, as long as you live, the project is within a 4 km radius of your parents' place, you can get some form of, you ballot out of the normal flat supply. So I think HDB sets aside a certain amount, a portion of like the flat supply for these people who take on this priority scheme. So it kind of gives them an extra, Chance. chance to yeah. yeah to get the project higher chance even so that you can live near your parents. 
Because simple terms is more of like the government is wanting you to stay nearer to your parents, yeah. which increases your chance of getting your queue number BTO. Yeah. Okay, now a lot of people are also considering using their CPF, okay, to help with their housing expenses. Oh man, yeah. Oh, Thomas Hisu has very strong opinions on this. Yeah. So, what are the pros and cons of doing so? Now, you might not know this and this might shock you. When you take your money from your CPF to pay for your house, you have to pay interest back to your CPF in cash. Yes, so so that yeah, so so that's what a lot of people are going through. So it's like when you have your money in your CPF, the government pays you. Yeah. When you take it out to buy a house, you gotta pay for that interest. But fun fact, if you take the CPF to buy other things, no need. Only when you buy a house. So a good interest that you have to pay only applies when you take it out to buy property. If there are cons to using your CPF to to, to pay for your housing, right? Yeah. What other options are there? Like um bank loans, HDB loan or something like that. Okay, so it depends on the market climate. So as of right now, interest rate is, is 4%. So now it would make sense to use your CPF to pay off the loan so that you take on lesser bank loan because bank loan is 4%, CPF is 2.5%. But for the last three years, it was hovering around 1% to 2%. And back then, it would have made more sense to not use your CPF, collect a good interest and just use cash to pay. A lot of people are very insecure when they don't see cash. So they want to have a lot of cash, so they just put all their CPF into the property. So that's the pros and cons. How about for freelancers? For uh, freelancers, yeah. there's a crazy haircut. So how they access your grants and your loans, right, is by looking at the stability of your income. Yeah. So for self-employed people, sometimes we make a lot of money, sometimes we don't make a lot of money. So the, in the eyes of the bank and the lenders, they look at us as very volatile. So they will not grant us high loans as compared to employed people. When choosing between buying a property and renting, what are some things that need to be taken into consideration? Oh my gosh, this is what I do every day. He loves it, he loves. <laughs> there are a lot of costs when it comes to owning a property, okay? I'm just going to say, eight of them. There's no more, no less. Eight. Bank interest, CPF accrued interest, maintenance fee, property tax, renovation, stamp duty, legal fee, agent fee. Insurance. Sorry? Insurance. Insurance and insurance, yeah. Great. I didn't miss out anything, right? No. Yeah, about. Alright. Yeah. So, <coughs> so you see, right? A lot of people have this tunnel vision. I want to buy a property in an area that I like to stay. Correct? Correct? Yes. Now, if you look at the property from that perspective, what happens if that property doesn't experience a capital appreciation? Think about it. The nine things that you have paid, you're not going to get it back unless the property experiences a capital appreciation. So, if you think about it on the grand scheme of things, right? Owning a property and not being able to get that nine things back might be more expensive than rental. So sometimes, actually, rental is not that bad of a thing. You're only throwing away rental. When you buy, you're throwing away 10 things. So that's one thing that we really need to understand. Alright, now we know that 10 things already. Um, the next part of the question is, when is it financially the right time to purchase a home? So actually, for myself and I think a lot of undergrads purchasing a flat out there, I think we plan to save enough for the first 5% down yes. payment because we do the staggered down payment scheme. Then after that, we just plan to pay, okay, 5% plus the stamp duty. Taking one thing yeah, at a time. Yeah, taking one thing at a time. Then after you, you, after you pay the down payment, right, you cry for a bit. Then after that, you ha have the next like 4 to 5 years to accumulate that 15% down you, payment. You cry, one more time again, you cry for a bit again. You cry for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We cry together. Yeah, cry together. <laughs> While waiting for your BTO, how, 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 yes. How, yes. yes. Would you rather rent a place uh, to stay with your partner or would you rather just bite the bullet and continue to live with your parents? Actually, I, will, I might also choose to convert into a tenant to stay with my parents. I think some of us have uh, aging parents, right? And then maybe this... Some of us. <laughs> okay, most, of us. Most, of us, <laughs> most of us have aging parents and then I would say I wouldn't want to continue being a leech on them when I pass a certain age. Especially when I come out of university and I get that sense of like first foot into financial independence mm. then I will choose to pay my parents a rental sum be like okay I hope this covers like a portion of like your house mortgage and then like some of the expenses the like utilities etc etc and then what if your boyfriend stay over then your boyfriend don't like your parents or you stay over then the this one has to be established, yeah, established before you even start. apply your BTO yeah. and I think if let's say I would say it's a red flag right mm. if your if your boyfriend has 
problems with parents, especially because yeah. um, you would want both sides to kind of align with each other. Even if they don't like each other, at least they align, oh. right? Else, it will create a lot of like uh, future problems. Future problems, future yeah, with conflicts. each other. Yeah. Is it financially sound to BTO if you are not married yet? Okay, what are the chances that you and your partner may end things before you get your fee? So, I think when it comes to getting a BTO, right, you have that five years runway to test your relationship somewhat, right? So, you probably have like dated this person for maybe a few years and then after that, you guys must have a definite sit down to kind of align your own values and whether like this is the right path and this is the right time for us to go into a BTO. Because at the end of the day, it's a really long game that you're playing. Five, if not 10 years, then 15 years, right? So I think having a good alignment with your fiancé on like your career path, what are your financial goals, are very important questions that you should probe even before applying for a BTO. Okay. Actually maybe a tip right, would, to, would be to travel with your partner first. Mm. I think even before applying right, you should take a long trip with your partner to see whether this person is compatible or not. Because mm. you wouldn't know what the person's habits are, especially you know when they are staying, you are staying in separate houses. You only know whether like, you are truly compatible after going for a really long trip. Hey, can I tell you something also based yes. on that, right? Yeah. Like, all these taking a trip, these things, right? This is, I, I promise you, it's just a tip of the iceberg. Yeah. When you start to do things together, shoulder responsibility together, like pay mortgage lah, yeah. wow. It's heavy. Yeah, yeah heavy. It's, it's, it's next level. Mm. Life is a gamble. Oh. It really, yeah, that's true. It's true. Life is a gamble. It's really, it's true. That's yeah. why I think one tip for the young graduates who are currently like having a like, BTO waiting, right? During this period, right? Make use of this period and slowly change your habits. Mm. Really, slowly change your habits. Before it gets too late, you know? Change your habits now because by the time you get your house and if you depend on getting your house to change then, it'll be too late. That's when oh. That's when everyone break up. I feel That's personally attacked, but yeah. Use this period now. <laughs> I mean, I only changed my financial habits when I started having bills to pay. La, but that's the thing that made me go. Yeah, yeah, that's correct, the thing I was telling correct, you about. Correct. But better sooner than later. Alright, so for our final segment, this is called Facts or Cap. And I'm going to read out some statements. So if you all think it is a fact, you put up the smiley face. Fact. Yes, the smiley face. Yes. Okay, and if you think it is cap, or you think it's false, it's not true, then you put the sad face. Okay. Correct, okay? First question for the fact or cat segment. Singapore has one of the highest home ownership rates in the world. Without a doubt, uh, you really flip it up. Uh, don't look at other people, uh, Rachel. I never see it properly yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> and in three, two, one, fact, fact, fact. That is absolutely correct. Yes, as of 2021, 88.9% of resident households here own their own homes. Number two, Bishan is the first estate built over a graveyard. Fact, fact, <gasps> cat. Shit. And for the first time ever, our real estate property agent is wrong. <sighs> that means you yeah, are correct. Yeah. Right. The first estate that required graves to be exhumed is actually in. Tiong Bahru. Oh, that's interesting. Ah, I didn't know that. Tiong Bahru. I, I was guessing Orchard. Oh, I know Bishan was built over a cemetery. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I thought that too. Third question, fact or cap? There is a HDB block with only two units. What? Huh? Uh, in three, <laughs> two, one, fact, fact, fact. You're all absolutely correct, okay? Yay! It is block 10C in Bedok. It has two executive apartments in a two-storey block. Wow. Ah, oh. So it's just two units. You're not sian, man. Like your neighbour, you see each other every... <laughs> you have only one neighbour. And you, wow, you're not sian, I will be sian for you, man. Number four. Marine Parade used to be part of the sea. Fact or cap? In three, two, one. Fact, fact, fact. Absolutely correct, okay? Marine Parade is the only HDB town built entirely on reclaimed land. Number five, the longest... Eh, this was a term I used, I, I, I explained just now. The longest MOP, minimum occupancy period, is 10 years. Fact or cap? Fact, Good job, fact, everybody. fact, in three, two, one... Everybody's wrong! PLH <laughs> what? PLH, the longest MOP is 10 years. <laughs> The longest MOP, the flats bought under the Fresh Start Scheme, have the longest MOP at 20 years. 20? What? Huh? 
Oh, I didn't know 20? that. Twenty? Is that even that's possible? So there were twenty years MOP period. That's fun fact for me as well. That is a fun fact right wow. there. Wow. Question number six. Cats are allowed as pets in HDB flats. In three, two, one. <laughs> HDB, do something about this. <laughs> what have they done to you? They are just cats. You are absolutely correct, okay? They are not allowed in HDB. Yeah, I got three cats, eh. you got two cats. Eh. I got two cats. I got three cats. Eh. I only, exactly, you see? <laughs> okay, and for the final question of the day. Block 78 at Tiong Bahru has three different street addresses. Fact or cat? Three, two, one. Cat, fact, fact. It's actually a fact! Okay, Block 78 at Tiong Bahru has three different street addresses. It is also known as 78 Mo Guan Terrace, 78 Yong Siak Street, and 78 Guan Chuan Street. Oh, that's yeah. fun fact for me as well. That is a fun fact right Very there. Very fun I have fact. never known. Alright, so that was a super fun segment. And of course, this entire episode has been so informative. I have learned, I have learned so many things. But first of all, I think the main thing is that I'm very sad because I really need to get my life in order. <laughs> so if you guys have one final key piece of advice for the viewers out there, what would it be? Don't feel pressure to rush things. Talk it through slowly, no matter what. Deal it internally first before you start like externally like applying the PTO. Buying a property comes with a lot of cost as we have talked about. So it's not just about buying the right property but you got to make sure that your property experience some form of capital appreciation right so if you need help to analyze which property is best for your situation you can always head on down to my tiktok channel and you can drop me a dm getting a bto is definitely a journey start in not there's no one size fit all there's no best property but most importantly you have to ask yourself and your partner as well like what best fit your need and also have to deal with hard questions with yourself whether your financial planning is in order and whether like you guys are ready to take this leap of faith together to journey along for the next like probably 25 years to pay off a mortgage especially for those who are starting young and if you are interested in getting a free downloadable finance excel sheet for you to plan out your BTO finances definitely head over to my telegram channel to download the excel and as for me, I also have a small piece of advice for you guys. Um, life has a lot of bullets that you want to bite. Like. It depends on what kind of bullets and when do you want to bite it. By the end of the day, as long as you bite the right bullet, or even if you bite the wrong bullet, it's okay, it's still a learning journey. In life, there are no mistakes, there are only lessons. And that about wraps up this episode of Chatterbox on housing. Yay! Yay! Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm very sure that there are going to be a lot of many, many uh, Chatterbox episodes which are going to be very entertaining and I'm very sure that you guys will have a great time, okay? This is Leon signing off. Thank you guys for hanging out with us and we'll see you guys again sometime, someplace, somewhere, somehow. Cheers! Woo! Bye! If you like this episode, please... Like, comment, share and subscribe. Bye! Bye.